Uh, hello and welcome. Um, I hope you can understand me with the translation. Um, it's, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the very warm welcome to Barcelona. Um, I'm from Liverpool, another maritime city, uh, also a European capital of culture, also a city that where football is very important. I believe that we've won five European Cups and Barcelona have won three. <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> oh, and we've got the Beatles as well. Okay, I've been uh, asked to uh, develop some of the work that Carolina uh, outlined about the challenges for European dune conservation. It's a challenging subject um, to try and cover the whole of the, the European region. Um, here I go. I think if we stand back and uh, think about uh, the map of Europe, first of all, and we look at the political boundaries and the, the legal and administrative boundaries that we've created, well, nature doesn't recognize that. Nature recognizes something a little more like this. Um, and our response between uh, the uh, political boundaries, legal, administrative, and the areas that nature recognize is this, the biogeographical regions uh, that we create throughout <coughs> Europe. And if we look at this, for sand dunes, I'm not used to doing talks sitting down, um, we can see five major uh, biogeographical biogeograph regions in Europe. First of all, we can see the, the, the Baltic region, where uh, we can see that uh, dunes, where there's quite a lot of sediment around there, uh, there's beach barrier formation, um, there's uh, still isostatic rebound from uh, the glacial processes, so uh, dunes are well distributed in the Baltic region. If we move down then into the North Sea region, um, we can see there's uh, almost uh, continuous uninterrupted dunes from Jutland in Denmark all the way down the coast here to the Netherlands uh, through Belgium into down towards Calais in France. Then if we take the Atlantic region, uh, this, this area around here, we can see there are uh, substantial dunes, uh, frequent and well-developed dunes all the way down through uh, into Spain and the northern part of, of Portugal. Um, and then uh, as we move through to where we are uh, today, uh, in the, which is the, the biogeographical region of the Mediterranean, part of it is not in the Mediterranean, but it's the Mediterranean biogeographical region, we see that dunes are um, complex. Uh, it's a heterogeneous coastline. Uh, there are large dune areas associated with deltas and plains, uh, and there are lots of areas of small dunes, lots of areas of small dunes between headlands. Um, finally, uh, we've got the Black Sea uh, region. Thank you very much. Finally, we've got the... Can you hear that? Yeah. Yep. We've got the Black Sea region, that's better, um, where uh, there are... Uh, diverse dunes uh, with deltas, uh, particularly associated with uh, the Danube area. Um, what we see then is that throughout the whole of Europe, throughout the whole of this area, there are uh, significant dune areas um, and uh, where there's plenty of uh, sediments. So to conserve dunes, we have to think of the dune resource on a European scale, but realizing these natural regions. Um, this, this issue of coastal dunes, um, we see that uh, they're widely distributed throughout Europe, uh, and we see that they're complex, uh, and the, there are uh, obligations now through the uh, EU Habitats Directive to conserve and uh, look after these areas um, and to achieve something called favorable condition. Now, 
I want to come back to that later on in this talk to think about this concept of favorable condition, which is uh, written into the uh, Habitats Directive. How we achieve this favorable condition for dunes um, is means that we've got to understand the habitat itself. We've got to understand the concepts of dune management, and in particular, to understand the concept of dynamic dune management. And then consequently, the implications for our actions, uh, how, we, well, how we choose to follow this dynamic dune management. Now, to understand sand dune management, um, really we've got to kind of understand the sand dune landscape um, and, uh, and our decision making in dunes must, has to be framed around this uh, conceptual uh, model. Um, the intention here um, is that sand dune management, dune management should operate wherever possible at the highest level here. Um, most of the management goes on down at this level um, and quite often it's practically limited uh, for us to work any higher up here. Um, as we frame our management, as we, as we think about our management though, when we're working typically at this level, wherever possible we should try and work higher up. If we uh, think about uh, soils are something that's not not well um, studied generally on sand dunes, and we think about soil responses. Um, groundwater um, is very important, particularly as dunes are important wetland sites. Um, and we're trying to influence uh, groundwater conditions can be very difficult in dunes because of many external factors uh, on the site. If we work, try and work at the relief level, this is often the, the only ways you can really uh, operate at this level is through uh, beach or dune replenishment schemes where sediment is manipulated. Um, if we think about the lithology level, quite often the only time we ever intervene in coasts at this level are when there are uh, sea defense works or something else that interrupts the movement of sediment on the coast. Um, finally, uh, it's, you, it's, it's outside the remit, typically, of site managers to operate at the climate level, but we must always be uh, aware of this, um, th this framework. Uh, importantly, again, we can see this, the decreasing dominance of the process. So if we limit ourselves to work solely at the vegetation and fauna level, the impact that we'll have will be limited. Um, but it's, much, it's more difficult to work at these higher levels, but we should always aim high in conservation management. I'll return to this slide at the end. Now, to develop the work that Carolina um, you mentioned, I want to whiz through now some of the issues and factors affecting coastal dunes. Um, so, first of all, very quickly, um, Probably the most important thing that we need to do is to maintain, whoops, is to maintain uh, natural processes, uh, particularly sediment supply. Things like coastal defense schemes and developments uh, interrupt this, uh, these sediment supplies. Um, and if the, the movement of sand is the uh, lifeblood of sand dunes, and of course, if the, if the blood stops flowing, the system dies. We're still seeing across Europe uh, significant habitat loss with dune systems. Uh, this is a dune system that I was particularly familiar with. I managed for many years, and this is the last bit of development in the 1980s. But housing and roads and railways and golf courses and agricultural development are still happening on dunes. Now, not only is there habitat loss, direct loss, but those developments also fragment the dune landscape and limit it from to perform in a healthy and dynamic way. Around most, much of Europe, the agriculture is a, is a significant issue on sand dunes. Uh, agriculture has um, shaped, formed, and molded the dune landscape, particularly in northwestern Europe. And the resulting vegetation and landforms uh, are, are, is uh, highly dependent upon usually traditional agricultural practice. 
What we see then is that these traditional agricultural practices are, are in decline. And so um, we see inappropriate uh, grazing management in many areas, many dune areas, and that can lead to this reduction in biodiversity value, particularly important uh, in dune slacks and dune wetland areas. Um, and generally, there's a lack of grazing across dunes in Europe. Um, that has implications not only for biodiversity, but also uh, for the mobility of sand dunes, um, where sta uh, more stable landscapes are created, resulting in a loss of biodiversity. So there are big geomorphological issues to do with that as well. Invasion is also uh, a, a problem. Um, by uh, alien species, by invasive species, and we see this again through all dune areas in, in Europe. Uh, in Britain, uh, we've got a particular problem with Hippophyramnoides, a, a sea buckthorn. Um, in some parts of Europe, that's native and desirable. In Britain, parts of Britain, that's an alien and a problem, and lots of money and energy goes into trying to control these things. Um, We've also got this, imp this down the bottom here, perhaps this should be more prominent, is the impact of alien species. And when we look at uh, urban dune areas, this can be highly significant. Um, and some of these alien species are just sitting there waiting to take off. Afforestation is still a big problem in, on European dunes. Um, some dunes are still being afforested, planted with pine plantations, typically. Um, and the existing uh, afforestation schemes are, have, uh, in many places, very negative impacts on the dune landscape and its function. And there are some very big schemes now throughout Europe, in Denmark, in France, in the UK, to name just a few, to remove these pine plantations. And that's a, that, that is a significant issue for sand dune conservation. Waste disposal is still an issue. Um, there is still organized waste disposal going on on sand dunes throughout Europe. Some areas this has ceased. In England, we have mostly stopped this. Um, but elsewhere, it continues. Throughout the whole of the European uh, Union area on dunes, illegal fly tipping, and, to this, and particularly in urban areas, the disposal of garden refuse continues. It's, this is a widespread and highly significant problem. We've been conducting some research in the UK on this and have been horrified at the impacts of these, this garden refuse tipping on dunes. Significant areas of internationally important sites are being damaged and destroyed. Military use is still an issue uh, for, uh, on dunes. Uh, this, th this wasn't live, by the way. <laughs> it's quite safe. Okay. Um, Military use of sand dunes is really important. It has been a long established use, uh, particularly related to World War II. The impacts of, um, of that use are still uh, present today. Um, and the military use large areas of dunes right across Europe. And that use varies from uh, bombing ranges, which you can see here, through to uh, infantry, uh, dry, tri dry training areas. Um, the, some of some people in the audience here today were with us in Northern Ireland a few weeks ago where we went on to a military site um, where there's all kinds of activities. So the military use of dunes is highly significant again. 